But uh, it was a very, very physical football game against a very physical football team. And uh, I congratulate Coach Mike Ayers, who coached here one time, for putting together a team that uh, they know what they need to do, they know what they want to do, and he's developed a program around it. Uh, obviously, what they do with their offense, uh, it's a lot more multiple than most uh, wing bone teams you see because, they, as you can see, they went into two back, one back, and then tried to camouflage a bunch of things to get back into what they normally do. And, and because of that, uh, they were able to move the football. Obviously, if you look at the game, it's, it goes right back to what we talk about in football. You know, they control the ball for uh, uh, right at 40 minutes to our 20 minutes. And obviously, you can't win football against a team like that that does that. Um, you know, the, I, I think the, the keys to the game, they, they rush for uh, 364 yards to our 76, and then if you take away yards, it became negative. So they had uh, 33 more plays than we did. Uh, I think the key, you know, defensively, we, we did some really nice things. We were able to convert on third down five of 15 times, but it's like we said going in the ball game, that's really not successful because then they go for it on fourth down and one, and they make it, and they were able to make four or five of those fourth down situations which you know got kept them on the field kept our offense off uh, uh, offensively they uh, very very strong in the defensive line and uh, our guys had a hard time blocking them and that because of that uh, we really never got a rhythm on offense uh, throwing or running and played a lot of defense I thought again like I say our defense responded well for the most part uh, but at the same time we didn't do enough to win the ball game quite honestly we we from the opening whistle once they got going and got ahead 14 to nothing. Uh, you know, we were just hanging on for dear life because I, I think, you know, our kids played extremely, extremely hard. But that particular night and probably right now, they are a better football team than we are because of a lot of reasons. But at the same time, the thing that I was most impressed and proud of our kids, when I say kids, I'm talking about young men, was their fight. Uh, they continued to work. Uh, they didn't give up. And at the end of the ball game, I felt like uh, they had performed well. And after watching the film on Sunday, you know, normally we have a lot of what ifs. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of what ifs. Uh, they, they beat us. Uh, like I say, the better team that particular night won without a doubt. And I'll be shocked if they're not one of the top two or three teams in our conference by the year's end, depending on if they get their quarterback back. I don't know what happened to him. He went out, uh, the young man came in and did a really nice job. Obviously the guy that went out uh, threw the ball probably uh, more like a, a drop back quarterback would but at the same time the uh, you know the over, overall reason they rushed the ball they kept the ball they were able to convert on third and fourth downs we weren't able to get the ball back and the time of possession obviously wore us down and we are in really good shape I mean if y'all any, any of y'all came to the game you know how hot it was it was extremely extremely hot and humid day and I thought our players responded to it very very well we had uh, one young man get hurt. Uh, we had one go down with cramps, and he fought through most of that. So, again, I compliment Al Johnson for the job he's done with our strength and conditioning program because it was not like we got out physical and out manned. We just got beat by a more mature, more physical team that, because of age and experience, and uh, like I say, they, they do a good job with what they got on both sides of the ball. They know what they want to do, they do it. And, uh, you know, if you look back at that old Miss game that they played earlier, they, they gave them some fits in a lot of different ways, even though they didn't have a chance to win that game. I think you can see where they are because of what Ole Miss has done the last couple weeks since then. But, uh, uh, you know, the, the thing we told our guys is you don't put your head down, just keep moving forward. And I think they've done that. Uh, they came back Sunday. I was really shocked that we came back with as much uh, uh, excitement and enthusiasm a lot of that has to do with who we're getting ready to play this week which we'll talk about that after i go through the players of the week but uh, uh i think we were probably not as beat up as i thought we would be on sunday uh they ran around well we got a lot of things done sunday obviously we try we want to meet on sunday to kill the game and then uh, today they'll uh you know go to classes or day off because the ncaa rules and then we'll start going full force tomorrow Players of the week for the week, you know, we had uh, some guys that played really, really well. Uh, defensive player of the week was Khalil Mitchell. Uh, he played by far his best game. When I say best game, he played the game like a linebacker supposed to play it. He was very physical. 
Uh, he stayed in his gap. He stayed on his feet. He ran to the ball. And that was the first game that I've seen him really have a complete game in which I felt like he really, really looked like a big-time linebacker. So that was exciting. You look at his stats. He had five solo hits. He had our only sack, and he graded out 80%. I think he's uh, got two or three sacks right now. So he's, he's doing a good job, and he's one of our more, more vocal players, sometimes too vocal, you know, uh, but at the same time, he keeps them excited, and uh, he's done a good job, and he's really working hard to get better. Offensive player of the game, Dalton Poncilia. He graded out 100%, which is unheard of. He had three receptions. He filled in one punt. Uh, that he needed to feel. So he's, he's been a very, very consistent football player for us. And uh, I've said it time and time again, Coach Raider's done a really good job with our wide receivers. We've got about eight, nine, ten guys that every week are making a catch. So it's not like they can jump on one guy and shut us completely out. So uh, like I say, Coach Raider's done a really good job with those guys. Uh, special team player of the week, which would need to be rewarded. Adam Mullins had nine snaps. He had nine uh, good snaps. And when we say a good snap, we're talking about in the framework of the punter's body. Uh, he had uh, one. He had one tackle, and he had one where he caused a penalty to be caused a penalty to be called because of his covering on it. So uh, he was our special team player of the week. Effort play, a guy that's coming along and really getting better. Uh, Jason Matafuqua, he chased a uh, pitch down on the sideline and showed really, really good athleticism. He's got a chance to be a really good player. All he needs to do is learn how to play the game, learn more about football. But if he continues to work, he's got all the tools you're looking for in a good defensive football player. Obviously, when we uh, looked at our scout squad guys of the week, we call it show team because they're really giving the pitch. I don't like to call them scout squad. When you call them scout squad, that means they're kind of a little bit lower than everybody else, and they're not. So we call them show team guys. But the two guys and uh, the defensive player was Jack Jones, who's one of our starters on special teams, and Matt Williams, who we have moved from a quarterback uh, last year to wide receiver this year, and uh, he's making some strides and really coming along. So th those are our uh, Bowman Jewelers players of the game, and rightfully so, they've done a good job for us. So uh, excited about that. Uh, you know, now we can move on to this week. Uh, no bones pulled about it. This, in my opinion, is our crosstown rival. I would hope they feel the same way, or at least I hope at some point we make them feel the same way. I think in all other sports, it's already like that. Uh, they've got uh, an outstanding program. Uh, Coach Huseman has done a great job with that program since he's been there. Uh, they've won the conference championship three years in a row. Uh, right now, I think they're ranked third in the country. Uh, nobody's been close to them yet. You look at them on film, they're in the top two in the conference and top three in the nation in a lot of categories, both offensively and defensively. Uh, you know, we talk about them. They're 4-0 for the first time since uh, 1979. That's a long time and they've done a really good job. Uh, I'm not going to go into the stats. Y'all can read that, but uh, they're ranked nationally, like I say, both offensively and defensively in sacks. Uh, uh, least yardage given up. Uh, defensive rushing, offensive rushing, uh, scoring, scoring defense. So they're, that's the reason they're third in the country right now and deservingly so. They've done a great job and uh, right now, they're playing with a great deal of confidence there. They, they have got their program where we want to get our program. That's about what it amounts to. Obviously, we recruit against them quite a bit. Uh, uh, they're close enough that, uh, you know, the, the team that we should want to beat is them. And uh, like I say, the main thing we need to do is get them feeling the same way about us. And we'll, we'll, we'll find out a little bit more about this week. Uh, their ranking is the highest one they've ever had going into the playoffs. Uh, you know, they've had, uh, last week they had 521 yards against a really good Sanford team who I think will be in the top echelon of the uh, SOCON this year. Uh, and they sacked them several times, I think five sacks, uh, 521 yards of offense. They, they got them out of the game pretty quick. And I think that surprised Sanford as well. But they're, they're playing really, really good football right now. They're, uh, they've got nine players that were either preseason all SOCON this year or were previously all SOCON last year and that's a bunch of people so uh, we know we're dealing with somebody that's got a lot of experience they've got a lot of really good football players uh, defensively they run extremely well up front uh, probably not quite as big and bulky as what we saw last week uh, I think 
I don't. I want to make sure I use the right word. Athletic. Uh, you know, they like I say they they're able to run to the sideline, 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 both with their front four and their linebackers. So that's something we got to be concerned about. Their three of their defensive backs have been picked uh, either all, all SoCon for this year or they were all SoCon last year. So they've got a lot of returning starters right now. They have. Eight starters returning on uh, offense, six starters returning on defense, two specialists. So they've got a lot of guys uh, coming back. Uh, their front four, they've got three guys that are in the top 15 in the conference in sacks. So they obviously get the quarterback on the ground a great deal, and that's one thing that we've got to do a better job. First of all, we need to stay out of third and long. Second of all, if we're getting third and long, we need to give our quarterback a chance to uh, be productive. So we know what we're dealing with there. But uh, you can tell us, uh, I think, Chattanooga week. Uh, a lot of our guys have been over here today watching film, uh, seeing what they're getting ready to deal with. Uh, you know, we've talked about uh, several things, but I want to make sure that we challenge all of our student body, all of our Greek system, uh, all former lettermen, uh, our community. We need to fill that stadium up and we need to be wild and woolly and we need to make sure that uh, we make the crowd part of what we got to do as a football team. I thought Kennesaw State did a great, great job of that, and we need to follow suit with that. Uh, I think that's going to be very important. I'll be really, really disappointed. It's supposed to be great weather, uh, unlike last week where it was about 98 degrees, but uh, I think it's supposed to be about 78 on Saturday. It should be a really, really nice day for football. Uh, we're playing at 12 noon, which gives us a chance to play and get done what we need to get done. And then uh, a lot of people can get home and watch some games on television, whatever they want to do. But you know, right now, ticket sales are going great, but that's not enough. We want to fill that stadium up. We want people to have to beg for tickets, especially our student body and, like I say, our Greek system. You know, We want to make sure that we always think uh, Farm Bureau and Insurance and uh, the American Cancer Society for sponsoring the game. Uh, obviously, we'll have some pink on our uniform this week uh, in memory of people that have passed away because of cancer or people that have had cancer, including myself, and uh, make sure that we were appreciate and respect uh, the people that uh, we're playing for. So uh, that's, that's one thing that we want to do. Like I say, the game's at 12 noon, and we are playing one of the top teams in the country. It, it'll be, in my opinion, it'll probably be in the two years that I've been here for sure, it'll be the highest ranked team. I'm not sure. Where was Georgia Southern? Scott, do you remember when we beat them? Where they won? So that's been... 2002 or 2001, so we're talking about 15 years ago. Uh, now, 15 years later, we're getting a chance to do what we got an opportunity, and you don't get this opportunity much because you don't play that many teams that are ranked as high as they've been ranked. Uh, they've been in the playoffs a couple of years here recently, but uh, I compliment Coach uh, Huseman and his staff and their players on uh, understanding what it takes to, to win consistently because they have become, in my opinion, the last three years, the marquee team in our conference until somebody knocks them off that pedestal and it's, uh, nobody's been able to do that. So, uh, like I say, we've got an opportunity to see where we are. I think the, the exciting thing about this, you know, we've had a chance to play in the Bro Bristol Motor Speedway against the first SOCON team. We've had a, play, a chance to play against Kennesaw State, our first FCS team. Uh, we've had a chance to go play a really, really, probably a top 20 team in Wofford. Now we're getting ready to get a chance to play one of the top five teams in the country, as well as being, in my opinion, our crosstown rival in uh, University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. And uh, Chattanooga is, uh, like I say, they're doing what they need to do to give themselves a chance to win every week. They're very solid on uh, all phases. They've got an excellent punter. He's averaging, I think, about 47 yards a kick. Uh, their field goal extra point kicker is very, very solid. Uh, but they've got quite a few upperclassmen that uh, I think have given them some stability as well. They, they've been there long enough now that, you know, once they graduate a senior, they got a sophomore ready to be a junior and, and so forth. And that's, you know, that's basically what we want to do. We're just, we don't have any classes yet, but uh, uh, it's going to be a great challenge, great, great opportunity, and we'll see where we are as a football program this week because we're getting ready to step it up another notch. And that's not taking anything away from Wofford because I do think they'll be one of the top three teams in the conference. But until somebody uh, is able to beat Chattanooga, they are still number one. So, questions? Do your players um, know what a rivalry this is for people that have been here for a long time? I think they do. I think anytime you are dealing with the logistically the closest school to you, it should be. I, I, you know, I, our players have been here to understand uh, when we play Chattanooga in basketball, it's uh, 
can get pretty nasty up in the stands, and uh, both teams want to beat each other. And women's basketball the same way. I, you know, got to see the conference playoffs there a couple years ago in Asheville, and uh, our players understand. I mean, I, they know, and the reason I know they know is because we've got most of our kids are from Tennessee or the surrounding area, and they understand where Chattanooga is, and they understand what Chattanooga stands for as far as the top of the league. So. Uh, I don't think I'll have to do a whole lot of coaching this week other than make sure we don't play the game on Tuesday and Wednesday and make sure we just continue to work hard to get ready to play on Saturday. Coach, you played a, a physical Wofford defense this week. Chattanooga is probably on par with them uh, given the struggles this past week. How concerned are you coming into this game? Well, I mean, we're concerned every week we play a great defense, and this is a great defense, and uh, they're playing with a great deal of confidence right now. I mean, they've. Uh, they're leading the league in sacks by a bunch. Uh, they're very, very consistent. The thing they've been able to do is get way ahead of people so they can really turn it loose on defense. Uh, they're, you know, in my opinion, probably one of the top FCS defenses in the country. I would say one of the top five right now. They are, uh, I'd say up front, they're not as bulky as Wofford was, but athletically, as far as the takeoff, running sideline to sideline, they have some guys that, uh, can, can make some plays. And like I say, they've got, I think, 15 sacks right now. They're far and away the leading sack leader in our conference right now. They've got the uh, uh, conference player of the year on defense, and he's back because I think he's got five sacks right now. So they, they've, got, they've got good players. They've done a really good job of recruiting. And, uh, you know, that's, that's right now the team that we've got to make sure that we're working toward to get to where they are year after year. Derek Carr had a big Great player, uh, probably not as big as Newsom from uh, Western Carolina. Same type of player to a degree because he's going to get you to hard yardage. But uh, you know he's a returning All Conference player as well. Uh, very mobile, uh, got good speed. They, they do a good. They spray the ball around really, really well. The quarterback is, a, you know, I thought after they lost. Uh, Houston last year that they probably wouldn't be good at that position and they're probably not as experienced at that position but uh, what they're putting on the field the quarterback throws the ball well he can run the ball well they've got uh, you know the running back is a very good player and they've got about four or five wide receivers that probably a lot like Western Carolina same type of athletes that they have I think their offensive line is really good you know we've recruited two or three of them so I know how good those guys are uh, but uh, you know like I say offensively right now they're hitting on all cylinders and the thing that on top of that, defensively, they're hitting all cylinders. We're getting ready to play a top five nationally ranked defense, offense, and football team in the country right now. Any other questions for Coach? Appreciate y'all being here. And uh, like I say again, I want to challenge everybody to be there at this game on Saturday. Uh, it, it's what college football is all about. It's what in my opinion, this area has been looking forward to. Uh, it is our crosstown rival. I know when we play down there, they're going to fill that stadium up, so we need to make sure we fill it up with our students, with our Greek system, uh, with our community, uh, with adults, and anybody that likes college football because it will be, uh, you know, it's going to be a physical, hard-fought, uh, hard-hitting football game. I, I have no doubt about that. So.